Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at BergzergArcade.com, and this is tutorial 146. Now, we've got pretty much the structure of our little menu scene working, and we have all the functionality that we really want in it, but there's one thing that I've left out that I kind of want to add. Since we're going to be streaming this over a uh, web player, uh, we're going to want to give some sort of visual on how much of the scene that we're trying to load has already been loaded. Uh, when we're doing all this stuff in the editor, everything's loaded pretty much instantly. So there's no real delay from going from one scene to the other. But when you start streaming over the internet, uh, there, there is going to be delay. So let's go ahead and start adding some code for that. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to come up here uh, right underneath the private bool for our has character. I'm going to create a private, uh, well, let's make it a float. And I'm going to call this percent loaded. And this will just tell me uh, how much of the level has actually been loaded so far. And I'm going to come down to my update function. And this is where I'm actually going to get how much of the level has been loaded. So right under our little if block here in our update. And what we're going to want to add is an else block. And there's just one line of code. We're going to say that the percent loaded application dot uh, my IntelliSense, come on, get stream progress for level and the level we're trying to load. And we'll just end that there. Now, this is actually going to save it off as a float. So it's a value between 0 and 1 and one being that it's completely loaded. And we're going to come down to our on GUI and this is where we're going to display it. But I'm going to want to check to see if we're actually loading a level first because if we're not loading a level, there's no point in displaying this. So I'm just going to say if uh, I believe it was level to load. So basically if it equals an empty just return because there's no point in displaying any of this GUI. But if it doesn't equal uh, an empty string, what we're going to display, I'm just going to make it really simple to start off with. You could use uh, GUI textures or you could use your own GUI style down here. I'm just going to use a GUI box. And of course, we've done a lot of styles already, so you should know how to do this. I'm just going to start mine off at zero, which is the uh, right at the very left of the screen. And I'm going to have mine be about oh, 25, well, let's make it 15 pixels high. And I want it to be about five pixels off the bottom. So we'll say uh, screen height minus 20 pixels. And I want it to go all the way to uh, the right side of the screen, but I'm going to want this to be sliding from left to right. And the way we can do that is just to say screen dot width multiplied by the percent of the level that we've already have loaded. So it'll give the, well, it'll give the image that, you know, as it loads, it, the bar moves to the right. And of course, I want it to be 15 pixels high. And I'm not going to put any text on it. And right above that, I'm actually going to display uh, the percentage that we have loaded as an actual number so they can actually see it as well. And I'm just going to display this as a label. Actually, I'm just going to cut and paste the box that we already have. Uh, let me just click out of there. Since almost it's almost the exact same, except now we're doing a label. Uh, I want it to be in the center of the screen. So screen dot width divided by two, and I'm going to make it. So let's say I'll make it a hundred wide. So we're going to divide that by two, so 50. 
and I'm going to do the screen height. I'm going to make it 25 uh, pixels high and we want to go up another 25 so that's 45 here and I am going to make it 100 wide and 25 tall. Now if what I want to display, I want to display uh, the percent loaded and since this is a value between 0 and 1 I'm going to want to multiply it by 100 so that it displays a, a percentage for us and I'm just going to add on a percent sign at the end and that should be good so let's go ahead and just take a look at it in our player here uh, we really won't be able to see it move from left to right because as I said before it loads up pretty much instantly in the editor but we'll hit load and it stops at zero and I've got an out of memory error so let's try that again so I'm gonna hit clear and we'll just hit load and it stops now I believe what's actually happening is that it's just loading so fast that it never actually gets to move now the way we could actually test this is come up to build settings and I'm actually going to make a stream build. So I'm just going to hit build. It's going to ask me where I want to save it. So I'll just save it here. This is my folder that I've been saving them to. And it's going to go ahead and compile my scripts and make a web version for me. Uh, I'll just pause the video until it's done. And we'll start up after that. So here we are, we have the web version built and you see I have my HTML file and my Unity 3D file and I called my my build web, that's why it says web.html and web.unity3d, feel free to call it whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and load up the HTML and uh, now since we're doing a web build this is actually saved in a different spot in our player prefs so I'm going to open that up, uh, let's go to uh, libraries, preferences and if we scroll all the way down to the bottom it's no longer using this plist version because that's for the standalone and the editor uh, when you start getting into web builds it'll save under this unity folder at least on the Mac it's uh, different on Windows again you'll have to go look it up in the docs to see exactly where it is uh, but we're now we're going to get web player prefs and if you look at it I'm running it on the local host and it's not a P list anymore it's actually a binary and I'm not sure how easy it is to actually open this up in another program to see what's in there I haven't actually tried and I I'm not sure of any programs that actually do do it but I'm sure there's something out there that does but just take note of where it saves now and since this is the first time we've run it uh, we don't have a character made yet so it automatically dumped us out here so I'm gonna make my character and of course we'll just give him a lot of health he'll probably need it for all these late nights he's gonna have <laughs> and we'll just keep clicking and clicking and it's done so we hit create and that will load him up into his world now everything should work just like it did before I uh, will go ahead loot everything character over let's grab the axe it loaded here let's take a look at the axe yep everything looks great so let's close it down and I'm gonna close this down as well so we'll bring up the window again where it was saved and I'm gonna load it up again now since we already have our character made it should present us with the option to either load the character or delete it I'm gonna hit load and I'm just gonna do it one more time this time really quickly see what happens and there you go you actually see the bar move uh, because I'm running on my local machine it's, it does load really fast so you don't really get the imagery of it loading but once you have it out on a web server it's not gonna load that fast now I do want that bar to actually get to hundred percent so let's go into mono develop and I'm gonna go 
up to the update function. And right here is where we're checking to see if uh, the level is completely loaded. And then of course we debug out. What I'm going to do up here is turn the percent loaded to equal one. So that way there when it comes down here, the bar will actually get to 100%. Now, uh, but let's go ahead. We'll make another build actually. Uh, I'm going to pause the video while it builds. I'm going to replace my old one. Uh, if you notice up here, this is where it's getting its name from. If I change the name to something else, I'll get a different folder down here. But for now, I'm just making a web build. So I call it web. So I'll replace that. And I'm going to upload this to... So I've been getting this error a few times now when I've been making web builds. And I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, sometimes I get it twice. I've never had it three times, but it's always still built for me and ran fine. Uh, I guess if anyone at Unity is watching, they might be able to uh, give some insight onto it. I've tried rebooting and doing it again, but I still get it. It just keeps failing to move that file. But anyway, what I wanted to say was I'm going to upload this to the website and you're welcome to go ahead and try it out. I'll be using the Dropbox method. so. There'll be periodic updates, probably daily for the next little while. Uh, and you'll be able to actually see the progress bar in action. So since it's not done, I am going to pause it and we'll come back after it's done. All right, so here we are. We're done. Uh, I'm just going to show some of the errors over here in case uh, someone at Unity does happen to uh, watch the video for some reason. <laughs> uh, let's let me recompile and then... I'll actually click the error so you can get a better look at it. Okay, well, that's done. I'm going to go back into my web build, load it back up, and click on it really quick. And we should notice it gets to 100% before it kicks us up to the next level. So I'm just going to stop that. Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to do for this uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, don't forget to drop by the website and check out the live demo. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Actually, there's one more thing I wanted to add to this script before we actually ended. Uh, you'll notice that when we click the button to load one of the levels, uh, the progress bar progresses along the bottom. And since I am running on a, a local machine, it runs pretty quick. But when you're streaming off the internet, it's going to stream a lot slower depending on you know bandwidth issues and whatnot. And I, once they click one of the buttons, I actually want to get rid of these buttons because I don't want them to click one and then uh, click another one after to switch what level is supposed to be getting loaded. So I'm just going to set another Boolean value up here. And I'm just going to put it down here at the bottom. And it will be private because it's not needed anywhere else. And I'm just going to call this uh, Display Options. This was something I noticed... Uh, while I was editing the video. And I'm just going to cut and paste this in. So I'm going to come back down to my GUI. And the first thing I'm going to check is to see what the value of this is. So if display options equals true, I'm just going to make sure I made it true by default. I did. So if it equals true, then display these buttons. There we go. And when you click one of the buttons, I want to switch the display options to equals false. So now they won't be displayed. You either get to pick one option or the other. And there we go. I'll do a quick check in Unity just to make sure there's no errors. I'm not going to make another build though to demonstrate. Uh, so we hit load, boom, the buttons disappeared, the bar, you get the bar, and then it loads. So there we go. That was what I wanted to add. So I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.